Hey guys, welcome back. Got seven brand new polls that have been released so far today that I'm going to run through in this video. I'll have links posted to all these polls down in the video description. Six of them are taking a look at state-specific results, and of those two coming out of Nevada, probably some of the final Nevada polls that we're going to be getting as we're heading into their caucus, which is taking place tomorrow. And if you want all of my updated video results on the Nevada caucus, then of course consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if you have not already done so. But I wanted to start here looking at this morning consult national poll and it's interesting because we can look at their data from before the debate and then after the debate a sample size here of 2,609 respondents and after we went through this past debate I felt like Warren was the best performer and I also thought Sanders was right up there with a really strong performance at the top with Warren maybe not quite as powerful of a performance from Sanders as Warren but I definitely had them one and two in my feelings coming out of that debate where I felt like Bloomberg took one on the chin. It was a pretty rough scenario for him. So not a big surprise to see him take a step back, whereas Sanders and Warren are able to take a step forward. Bernie gaining two points in first place at 30% of support. This is actually the most support he's had in any morning consult national poll over this past year. Joe Biden stays flat at 19. He's in second place in this instance because Bloomberg takes that three percentage point step back down to 17. Elizabeth Warren taking a two point step forward. She's up to 12 points, but still 18 points back of Bernie Sanders nationally in this instance. And then you have Buttigieg and Klobuchar each falling back one percentage point apiece with Buttigieg at 11 and Klobuchar at five. And all of these results within the margin of error other than Michael Bloomberg's, but nonetheless, not a big surprise to see these kinds of shifting around, at least based on what I took out of this debate that we just had. And also some interesting numbers here from the morning consult. Is the pre-debate favorability and unfavorability of Bloomberg compared to after the debate? So he actually had a net change of negative 20 in his overall net favorability, where he was at 61 pre-debate favorable to 25 unfavorable. And then after this debate performance, he's at 52% favorable compared to 35% unfavorable. So a lot of damage done to Michael Bloomberg with that particular result. So now I want to jump in to the state-specific polls. Going to be quickly first here touching on these two Nevada results. So the first Nevada poll is from Atlas Intel, a sample size of 517 respondents and a very bullish sign for the Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, where he's bringing in first place at 38%. And then you have a cluster there among the next four options where you have Buttigieg at 14, Steyer and Biden each at 11, Warren at nine, and then a little bit more of a step down getting to Klobuchar at five and Tulsi Gabbard at three. And what's interesting about this result is the fact that candidates are getting above that 15 percentage point threshold. And if this happens at a number of these caucuses where Sanders is the only one getting above that particular threshold, then he could end up getting all of the state delegate equivalents from those respective caucus sites and help his chances to potentially go on and have a very very commanding win in these Nevada caucuses. So we're going to have to see how that plays out tomorrow. The next Nevada poll that we have here comes from Data for Progress, and they actually released their numbers today on The Hills Show the Rising. We don't have the methodology or the sample size in this instance, but we can compare them to the prior data that they released about a week ago. And we can see still strong numbers here for Bernie in first place at 32. He's down three points from that prior result where he was at 35. Warren picks up one point in second place at 17%. Buttigieg stays flat at 15 and Biden also staying flat in this instance at 14 percentage points. And to close out this video, four more state specific polls to run through. This one is from UMass Lowell, a sample size of 450 coming out of the state of California. And we can see that Bernie leads the way in this instance at 24%. And then the only other response that had over that 15 percentage point threshold was Elizabeth Warren at 16. Then you have Biden at 13, Michael Bloomberg at 12, along with Pete Buttigieg. Klobuchar there at seven, Tulsi Gabbard at four, and then Tom Steyer rounding things out at just 2% of support. And then another UMass Lowell poll, this one actually coming out of the state of Massachusetts, very competitive at the top. You would expect the Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren to have something in the way of success in her home state, but she's actually in second place in this instance within the margin of error. Sample size of 450 respondents again, but Warren's there at 20, while Bernie is actually in first place in the state of Massachusetts at 21%. And Massachusetts is also bordering to Vermont, so there's also a little bit of a baked-in advantage potentially for Sanders, but not quite as strong as what you would figure Warren has baked in to that state. And of course, Massachusetts, they're going to be holding their primary on Super Tuesday. And to run through the rest of the numbers, we have 
Buttigieg bringing in 15 points of support, followed by Biden, who's at 14. Bloomberg bringing in 12. Klobuchar at 9. Tulsi Gabbard at 3. And Tom Steyer at 2. And then moving over to a victory research poll out of the state of Illinois, a sample size of 1,208. And we can compare this to their prior poll coming out of the state, which was back in the end of November, officially releasing November 25 in that instance. And Sanders gaining big time in this one. He picks up 11 points from that prior result, now nearly up to 26% of support, where Biden loses three points. He's in second place at 20%. Bloomberg, he also picks up 11 points for himself, hovering around 15 percentage points. Buttigieg actually loses five points in this instance, down to around 11% of support. And Warren, the biggest loser in this one, where she loses 10 points from where she was in the prior result, hovering around about 7%. Klobuchar picks up a few points to around six points of support. And then Steyer picks up a point to around three or so percentage points. And then Gabbard there at one point. And just one more state-specific result to take a look at. This one coming out of the state of Florida from Tell Opinion, a sample size of 800. I would take this result with somewhat of a grain of salt, given the fact that only 16% of the respondents were under the age of 45, which is likely to be a large net disadvantage to Sanders. And we're seeing that in the results here and comparing them to the prior poll coming out of this particular resource, which came out about three weeks ago towards the end of the month of January. And we can see Bloomberg takes the largest step forward in this instance, picking up 10 points in first place at 26%. And then after that, we have Biden who recedes back 15 points from their prior numbers at 20%. And then Sanders at 13 loses three points. Buttigieg picks up a couple of points to eight. Warren loses five down to 7%. Klobuchar picks up a few points to 5%. Steyer at two. And then of course, Yang no longer in this and neither is Michael Bennett, but Gabbard is down there at 1%. And that's the final poll I wanted to go through. Those are the seven data sets and if you'd like to take a look at any of these numbers for yourself, I'll have links posted down in the video description. I appreciate you stopping by. Consider subscribing for more, and I hope to see you back here for my next video.